As you know from the previous video in this series, SharePoint is an incredibly successful platform for creating corporate intranets and facilitating document management and document collaboration. As powerful as SharePoint is at facilitating document management and collaboration, it originally lacked a built-in capability for individuals to talk to each other while they were collaborating on documents. This shortcoming led many organizations to use Skype to facilitate conversations while collaborating. It was no surprise to many industry insiders when Microsoft purchased Skype and rebranded it as Microsoft Teams so that a complete solution was included in the Microsoft Online platform. Microsoft's implementation of the Teams product added several key capabilities to what Skype was able to do. First was the ability for individuals in a conversation to pass documents back and forth. Second was the ability to conduct video meetings between team members so that the use of Zoom was no longer necessary. With the sudden advent of the pandemic, and so many organizations needing to implement an effective work from home strategy, the combination of a SharePoint intranet with Microsoft Teams came at just the right time. The effectiveness of the Teams SharePoint solution is so powerful that leading business analysts predict that the combination will soon have a 75% market share. Before we outline how an organization needs to set up an effective implementation of SharePoint and Teams, it's important to understand how Teams is woven in to the Microsoft 365 environment. Many individuals are surprised to find out that while Teams is a powerful collaboration and communications tool, it can't actually store anything by itself. Chat messages and conversations are automatically stored in Microsoft Exchange. Shared team calendars are stored in Microsoft Exchange. Recordings of video meetings are automatically stored in Microsoft Stream. Documents passed between individuals in a channel meeting are stored in a dedicated SharePoint site. Lists created in Teams are stored in the same dedicated SharePoint site. Once you understand the dependency that Teams has on the rest of the Microsoft 365 environment, you can begin to understand the consequences of not having a good strategy for how Teams is used with an organization's intranet. The problem that most organizations have with Teams is that they don't understand that every time a new team is created, the Microsoft 365 platform automatically creates a dedicated SharePoint site, a dedicated Exchange account, and a dedicated Active Directory group. This is so important that it bears repeating Creating a new team always creates a new SharePoint site, exchange account, and Active Directory group. It does this by default, and it does this without warning you of the implications. The result is that many organizations end up with hundreds of undocumented SharePoint sites and exchange accounts that they are unaware of. These automatically generated, somewhat hidden SharePoint sites and exchange accounts inevitably accumulate documents and other information that is almost impossible to oversee responsibly. A piece of good news that is equally vital to understand is that when an existing team creates new channels for discussions on a particular subtopic of the team, no new sites are created. All the platform does in that situation is to automatically create an additional folder in the accounting SharePoint library that the accounting team was already using for document storage. Understanding the relationship between Teams and the Microsoft 365 platform guides the design for a highly effective and compact organizational intranet architecture. A well-architected intranet creates a SharePoint site for each department and a companion Microsoft team for that department with membership in both the SharePoint site and the Microsoft team controlled by a single Active Directory group. For example, an organization that had an HR department with a manager and nine employees would create a group called Human Resources in Active Directory that contained the 10 individuals. They would then create a SharePoint team site based on the Human Resources Active Directory group and then have the new SharePoint team site create a linked Microsoft Teams. The result is an effective consolidated module of functionality 
that serves the needs of the group while remaining easy to manage and support. The HR department gets an Active Directory group called Human Resources containing the team members, a connected SharePoint department site called Human Resources, and a connected Microsoft team called Human Resources. They would all be automatically connected, integrated, and supporting the same group of members. The SharePoint department site would act as the group's digital office. They could share the SharePoint team site calendar. They could subscribe to the news items on the SharePoint department site page. They can chat amongst themselves. They can create additional team channels and have impromptu and scheduled meetings in those channels. This approach, duplicated for each department in an organization, produces the cleanest architecture for applying the Microsoft 365 platform. At the top of this department architecture normally sits a site for the entire organization. It is the entry point for the entire intranet and provides information aimed at all employees as well as the navigation to reach any department site. It is typically created starting with an active directory group that contains all employees. Next comes the SharePoint site connected to that active directory group and finally a Microsoft team named for all employees. This results, as you might imagine, in an entry site where all employees can enter. Appropriate documents can be shared with all employees. News and announcements can be presented for all employees and company-wide meetings can be scheduled and facilitated through the attached Microsoft team. To ensure the continued efficiency and effectiveness as an internet grows, it's useful to create a governance plan that outlines appropriate procedures for common tasks. We hope this video was beneficial and that it has helped you prepare for designing a next generation internet.